Hey, you all know that I love digging stuff up about all the badass chefs that have been on Hell's Kitchen. I mean, that's the type of person you gotta be to survive the show, right? Well, not exactly. Some of these guys had to cheat like crazy to survive. Just like this contestant who forgot Hell's Kitchen is a competition and that using another teammate's rice and presenting it as his own ain't exactly fair play. How in the world is that even okay? So, I'm referring to Adam Livao from season 14, who came in at number 10. In the signature dish challenge, he got off to a fantastic start, even impressing Ramsey. What's more, my man landed with a perfect score of 4 on his first dish. But then, things started going downhill. During the Alaskan Fish Challenge on the third day, the blue team emerged as the winners, granting them a 5 minute head start. Despite the advantage, Adam couldn't match their pace and struggled to keep up with the competition. But unfortunately, Adam was in a tight spot because he couldn't finish his rice on time. While the blue team was busy trying to impress Ramsey, he turned to his partner for some assistance. I got hit. That's what being a good teammate is all about, right? But man, oh man, it ended up being a massive screw up. Adam and Millie Medley were the last ones to show off their grub to judge Michael Chimarusti, and they were hoping to tie up the competition since they were down 2-1 against the women on the red team. Adam's pan-seared halibut with grilled baby bok choy and basmati rice totally wowed Judge Chimarusti. I mean, their reaction was legit. But then, Millie went and served his dish of halibut francaise butter with bell pepper rice. Notice anything similar between the two? Go on, I'll give you a sec to think it over. Yeah, both dishes had rice in them. What are the odds, right? As the judge started to get suspicious, Adam's face went white as a sheet. Someone just got busted. Like, seriously, just look at the guy. Did you guys share on that one, or? Yeah, no. Ramsey wasn't about to let something like that slide. He jumped right in on the suspicion and straight up asked Adam if he borrowed Millie's rice. And what do you know, he was right on the money. When confronted, Adam couldn't fool Ramsey. He knew he had to come clean or things were gonna end up being even worse for him. Yes, sir. He had no choice but to confess that he used Millie's rice. And you know what that meant? His dish wasn't entirely his. What do you even do in that sort of situation? Share the points? Well, that sort of thing doesn't happen in Hell's Kitchen, and Ramsey wasn't gonna move heaven and earth to let Adam get away with it. Well, while Adam's dish may have been better than Millie's, there was no way that a stunt like that would tie things up with the women, meaning that the blue team lost the challenge 3-1. to one. The thing that really gets me about this is that the blue team had a five minute head start going into the thing. And instead of making the most of the advantage, Adam had to cheat and hand the points over to the red team. Since they lost, that meant they had to pay the price. They got stuck with the seafood delivery day and prepping fish for the next service. Talk about a major setback. We have halibut that three people have to carry, scale and gut. We got red snapper. That we but have you heard about that one contestant who was a total troublemaker and got on everyone's nerves? Yeah, I know. I didn't exactly narrow it down there. With that description, we could be talking about Robin Elmo Devar, Jen Gavin, or even Jason Underwood. But today, we're talking about the one and only Elise Harris. Yep, everyone's favorite drama queen. Despite being a walking train wreck, Elise appeared not once, but twice on Hell's Kitchen. Did the producers do it to try and get their numbers up? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Cause Elise might have been frustrating for her fellow contestants, but to us viewers, she was as entertaining as the best of them. It's crazy how in season 9, she somehow made it to third place. I mean, this is like a real mystery. And then, she came back for season 17. But this time around, luck wasn't on her side, and she landed in 7th place instead. Not exactly the improvement she was looking for. In hindsight, it's not too bad a performance, considering her attitude on the show. Anyway, coming back to how Elise tried to cheat her way out of trouble. During the dinner service, Elise was on the appetizer station with Elizabeth. Right from the start, she was shouting over Ramsey, interrupting him before he could even finish the ticket. And well, that's the last thing anyone should ever do when Ramsey's expediting, especially in the middle of a heated service. He called her out and asked her to repeat the ticket instead. And you have to see how that went down. Y'all ready? We need one scallop, two risotto for appetizers. 
But the struggle bus didn't stop there. When Carrie sent her scallops, Elise wasn't ready with her risotto. And when she finally served it, it was a disaster. Stop! No chance. It doesn't even look like a risotto. Ew, that's so runny and gross. Were you trying to make rice pudding there, Elise? Uh, trust me, after seeing this, Ramsay definitely wanted to kick her ass. And although Krupa tried to help her, Elise acted all high and mighty, saying that she was better and could beat her blindfolded and with a broken arm. But the karma on Hell's Kitchen is real, because when Krupa nailed a perfect risotto, Elise was left speechless. Later, Elise got up in Carrie's business when she saw her struggling with scallops. Not skipping a beat, Elise just jumped onto the fish station without permission, stealing Carrie's job like it was nothing. What's more, she was trash talking all the while. She even claimed she did it to impress Ramsey and be a team player, but Ramsey wasn't buying it. And we can't even send a table together because nobody's together. Smooth service, my ass. He punished her by making her sit at the chef's table while Krupa enjoyed the show. You, f off, sit on the chef's table. But it didn't end there. Customers started walking out. The death knell of any restaurant service. Despite all the drama and her behavior going against the show's spirit of cooperation and professionalism, the red team somehow managed to win the service. Can you believe it? She got away with it, even though it was a total circus. This next contestant thought they could cheat without getting caught, but Ramsey didn't hesitate to give her a piece of his mind. In the sixth episode of season nine, things got heated during prep time. Carrie was all frustrated because for some reason, no one seemed to be taking their job seriously. But guess what? Elise further added fuel to the fire when she accused Carrie of basically trying to make them all look like they didn't give a damn. And boom, that very instant, a huge argument broke out between the two. Elise, can I you please talk for one, I just don't like how you try to act like no one else around you is taking it serious. Woo, jolly cooperation. Anyway, let's head into the dinner service. Carrie was holding down the fort at the appetizer station with Jennifer, and it looks like she held on to that sourness from the argument earlier. Because this time, she sent up her salads even though Krupa wasn't ready with her pot stickers. And let me tell you this, Ramsey wasn't amused. Oh, f off of here. Here you go. As far as I'm concerned, you can f off. Start again. Yes, yes. He handed her back the salads and hit the reset button, ordering the red team to start the whole ticket from scratch. Later, Carrie tried to make up for it and lent Krupa a hand on garnish duty. But this is where she goofed up. Carrie is hoping to impress Chef Ramsay with her speed. I have no idea why she thought it was okay to dump a whole lot of fresh rice onto a plate that already had a bunch of old rice left on it. Ramsay couldn't even believe his eyes. Carrie, look at me, look at me! Are you adding the old rice into the fresh rice and just reheating it? I'm watching okay. everything you're doing. Yeah. Well, Carrie was clearly trying to cut corners. But that's not how it works in Ramsey's kitchen. He literally schooled her and trashed the entire pan of rice. Talk about a slip up. But hey, things somehow turned around for the better. The red team ended up winning the service after managing to nail both the team's orders. Carrie was feeling pretty good about it, especially after finding out the blue team got the boot. Eh, I guess you win this round, Carrie. Well, at least things worked out in her favor. Now, on the topic of professionalism, or the lack thereof, in the case of Seth Levine, a contestant from season five, he ended up in 13th place, and episode four was a real disaster for him. Assigned to the fish station during dinner service, Seth's first attempt at cooking scallops turned out rubbery, and Jay called him out on his lack of basic cooking skills. To teach him a lesson, Ramsey took matters into his own hands, and you have to see what he did. There you go, eat it, go on. Surprisingly, instead of being embarrassed, Seth claimed he enjoyed the overcooked scallops, explaining that he hadn't eaten dinner before the service. Talk about trying to save face. But the night only got worse for Seth. When Ramsey called out the next ticket order for the blue team, Seth was completely unfocused and couldn't repeat the order. And then the unthinkable happened. What is he doing? Hey you, hey you, come in. Damn. Don't tell me he did that. He, he used a cloth to wipe his face, which, mind you, was the same one he was using to clean the pans. Gross! 
Ramsey was rightfully furious and gave him a serious scolding for being so blatantly unhygienic. I mean, that was completely unacceptable. As if things couldn't get any worse, both teams ended up being named joint losers that night, and they each had to nominate two contestants for elimination. During the deliberations, Giovanni nominated Seth, pointing out the cloth incident as one of the major problems that night. Which, I mean, come on, it absolutely was. And Robert agreed. All in all, it was a disastrous night for Seth. And that one small but grossly disastrous mistake didn't go unnoticed by Ramsey or his fellow contestants. But now, I have the honor of introducing our next ingenious contestant, Barbie Marshall, who came in fourth place in season 10 and ninth place in season 17. So let's dive into the chaos of the fifth day of dinner service when she was working with Christina Wilson on a Mexican night theme. Marshall faced a disappointing start by sending up one pan of flavorless mussels and another that was perfectly executed. To Ramsey's abject horror. And why wouldn't he be? I once totally abandoned and abused. Even the color's different. Bland, delicious. But despite the setback, she managed to redeem herself after refiring them, saving the day, at least as far as the red team's appetizers were concerned. However, things took a turn for the worse when they got to the entrees. In a desperate attempt to salvage a situation going horribly wrong, Marshall made an unusual move. Today we need, look at me, a thermometer. Oh no, she didn't. Well, she used a thermometer to check the chicken, much to everyone's surprise. Now, this might seem okay to you, like we see this sort of thing on MasterChef all the time. And I know I love my new thermometer, but at this level of competition, in Hell's Kitchen no less, you better know how well the chicken is cooked, just by how it looks and feels. And while she was busy at work sneaking in her little tool to help her assess the cook on the bird, Ramsey caught her in the act and how he reacted was absolutely priceless. For us, anyway. For her, well... The day we need that to cook a breast of chicken, you get out! Anyway, during deliberations, a surprising twist occurred when Marshall nominated herself, arguing that she wasn't the weakest chef and didn't deserve to be on the chopping block. Astonishingly, Ramsey agreed with her and allowed her to stay, leaving viewers shocked. Well, I sure was, but were you? I can't help but wonder why these contestants always try to push Ramsey's buttons and test his patience so often. Like, if you play with fire, you're bound to get burned. And speaking of something that was the opposite of burned, this next contestant, Joshua Travato, committed one of Gordon's biggest pet peeves, cutting raw meat without checking if it was cooked first. During the dinner service, Josh got stuck at the meat station, and man, did he mess up big time. Brendan had to call him out for overcooking the halibut and asked him to fix it, but instead of taking the note and handling it, Josh got annoyed because he thought his Wellingtons were perfectly cooked. Talk about being overconfident. However, However, Ramsey took one look at them and instantly knew they were raw as can be. Stop! All of you come here! Ramsey didn't skip a beat and scolded him for his back-to-back -back rookie mistakes. But even after that, things still didn't improve for Josh. He kept rushing orders and even sliced into some lamb. That was still raw. Come here, you. Here, bring that over. Ramsey had no other recourse but to pull him aside, give him a serious talking to, and kick him out of the kitchen. One third of them to cook, and the center bits are raw. When you slice it and it's not right, what, what, what do you do? You stop what? I stopped thinking. You stopped slicing. Yes, sir. But now you slice them all, get out. Luckily for Josh, he managed to avoid the elimination, somehow. You know, I'm still trying to figure out how that happened. Unlike this next contestant, who totally brushed off Ramsey's direction and decided to do her own thing. But when Ramsey caught wind of it, things went from zero to hysterical real quick. You know how challenges involving eggs are always exciting, right? Uh, well, anyway, season seven's egg relay challenge was no different. The goal was to cook up four egg dishes, poached, soft boiled, sunny side up, and scrambled. Sounds like a walk in the park, right? But here's the twist. It was all about testing if the chefs could handle the heat and cook something as basic as eggs without stumbling. Now, the red team was one member short, and since it was a paired challenge, Siobhan Allgood was left to handle all the eggs on her own. How tough could that be? Turns out, it's way more difficult than you could imagine. 
The teams had a measly five minutes to cook the eggs to perfection. But oh boy, Siobhan started freaking out because she was flying solo. I'm a little nervous about being on my own, but I'm gonna kick butt whether I'm by myself or with other people. And then she made the mother of all mistakes when she decided to team up with Autumn Lewis and Fran Clyer without Ramsey's permission. Siobhan, work with me and Fran, all no right? Problem. Now, whether it was because she was under pressure or not, Siobhan had just thrown Ramsey's instructions right out the window, and Autumn ended up getting her hands on the sunny side up. Oh. Siobhan, I got your sunny side up. And you do scramble. When it was time for the judgment, Ramsey threw her a curveball and asked how long she had boiled the soft-boiled egg for. And what was her answer? You won't believe what she said. My teammates helped me, Chef. Your teammates helped you. I asked you to work on your own. And Ramsey's face says it all. He was like, are you serious? But wait, it gets even worse. Siobhan's explanation pushed all of Ramsey's buttons. Like, what pressure was she even talking about? Truth is, Ramsey would have actually given her dish a pass. Well, obviously, he knew she was working all by herself. But Siobhan left him stunned when she started blaming her teammates for her actions. Because there was pressure from my team. Are you serious? From, from, not from my team, from Autumn. Okay, I don't remember anyone forcing her to do anything. Autumn just threw out an idea, and Siobhan went with it. So it's totally on her. Anyway, when she realized things were crumbling down around her, she decided to break down. I'm so mad. I shouldn't have listened to the teammates that were forcing me to do something that I should have known was wrong to do. Like, come on, as if crying is going to make anything better. But guess what? It wasn't just Siobhan. Autumn and Fran also pulled the same stunt by throwing Siobhan's help under the bus. Who poached this egg? I poached that oh, egg, Chef. Oh, jeez. One point. Fuck off, will you? And that's even worse than what Siobhan did. Well, guess this challenge wasn't all that egg exciting after all, right? Uh, but guess what? This next contestant decided to take the easy way out and use canned sauce in the very first challenge of the competition. Yeah, believe me, I know how ridiculous that sounds, but it's true. During the first episode of season 14, while everyone was working hard to impress Ramsay with their culinary skills, Monique Booker took the quick and easy path. She was the last one from the red team to have her dish judged, and she presented what she called Moe's Pasta. Uh-huh. Naming a dish after yourself? Check. When Ramsay asked about her marinara sauce recipe, she confessed that she used a pre-made sauce from a jar. Having that name dish totally suck? Also check. And do I even have to tell you that Ramsay's reaction was priceless? It's just from a jar. He simply couldn't believe it. Ramsay wondered how she could be considered a chef if she couldn't even make her own sauce. However, Monique defended herself, arguing that using canned sauce was fine because not everyone has the time to make it from scratch, except maybe for a bunch of authentic Italians. I mean, forget being defensive. This one went full offense against Ramsay, and it's quite unbelievable that she had the audacity to do this too. No, if you wanted it, you should've just told me. I would've did it. You can't oh, do the kitchen. You I want. Arguing with Ramsay on the first challenge. Check, check, checkity, check. Look, I thought her attitude was terrible, and for a moment it looked like she would get the boot right then and there. However, surprisingly, Ramsay actually went ahead and said this. Most pasta, one out of five. Okay, got it. Given her attitude and lack of effort, it's understandable that one might have expected her to be kicked off the show even before setting foot in the kitchen. But somehow, she got lucky. But hey, the cans being in the pantry is an elaborate setup by the HK team to separate the great chefs from the lazy chefs. And I think Carrie fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. But I hope you're ready for season 9's signature dish challenge where chaos took center stage and the culinary rule breaking reached new heights. So, we had this dude, Jonathan Plumley, who was like the king of breaking rules right from the get-go. Now, I won't lie, Jonathan wasn't exactly a culinary genius, but man, he definitely brought some levity to the show. That aside, though, let's get into it. In this episode, it was Jennifer Normans versus our rule-breaking champ, Jonathan. Jennifer's dish was definitely looking like it came out of a three-Michelin-star kitchen, and Ramsay loved it. 
Well, you know what they say about following up those kinds of performances. Jonathan's punch drunk chicken was a hot mess to end all hot messes. And the fancy schmancy presentation? Honestly, at that point, it must have been insulting. What the f is that on a plate? Call this the uh, punch drunk chicken. But Ramsey found out something crazy. Pineapple looks like can. Yes. You'd use canned pineapples. Seriously, canned pineapples. And guess what? He had the nerve to blame the 45 minute time limit for that Hell's Kitchen faux pas. But Ramsey wasn't buying it. Not for a second. Limited time. 45 minutes? Ramsey totally roasted him, saying he was so full of crap that his eyes turned brown. In the end, Ramsey refused to taste it, calling it an absolute disaster. Can't blame him, right? Well, you also can't blame Jennifer for running away with the win either. Jonathan's canned pineapple fiasco certainly sealed his fate. I know it's too much for today, but the next contestant was a total disaster. Not only did they butcher the raw meat, but then they had the nerve to stick it back in the oven. You know how much Ramsey hates that, right? They were absolutely asking for trouble. So there's this contestant named Melissa Doney, who was a contestant on season eight and ranked in 10th place. She may as well have lit the entire service on fire, seeing how badly she ruined prom night dinner service. She sliced some meat, only to realize it was raw. Now, instead of accepting the mistake like a professional and, you know, maybe re-firing it, she thought she could salvage it by sticking it back in the oven. Can you imagine? Well, Ramsey sure can, and boy, does he despise it. While Ramsey was giving Melissa a good scolding for that failure, another contestant named Nora Sively decided to chime in. Rule number one. This is Sorry, chef. Like, seriously, talk about bad timing. Ramsey was not having it and fired back at her for interrupting him. Whether or not she deserved it, I couldn't tell you, but hey, it's Ramsey's kitchen. Anyway, the next day, Ramsey thought maybe Melissa could do better in the blue kitchen, but unfortunately, she just kept getting worse. Tough break for Melissa, I guess. Now, some of these past moments we could chalk up as poor judgment, but this next moment couldn't have been more blatant. This next contestant thought she could cheat without anyone noticing her, but boy, it backfired big time. So in the fifth episode of season five, we had Andrea Heinley on the meat station. Sneaky as she was, she hid some burnt Wellingtons and tried to act like she was fixing them when Ramsey asked about it. Where's the Wellington, please? Chef, I'm refiring a Wellington, the bottom's burning. Seriously, did you think that could fool Ramsey? Nah, our man saw right through her. And you can imagine the insane fallout from that situation. I'm yeah. putting protective uh, paper. Shut up, you, yeah. Shut up. What is this? Ramsey wasn't holding back, and he made sure the whole red team saw the mess of burnt meat. And did you see Andrea's face? Absolutely priceless. Instead of owning up to it, Andrea played it off with a lame excuse, saying she didn't know how it burned. Come on, we all know that she probably cranked up the heat way too high. And even if not, come on. You could see how bad it looked. Ramsey was not impressed to say the least. He gave her a dressing down of epic proportions. They, oh dear, fucking pile of shit. Man, it's moments like these that make me love reality TV. Now, you'd think Andrea would be history after that, right? But nope, she somehow managed to survive elimination. Gosh, that's an all too common occurrence. Like, most of the people on this list managed to escape the chopping block too. In her case, it was a close call and she admitted her performance was terrible. Yeah, no doubt. During the elimination talks, Andrea tried to be noble and told LA, the mastermind behind the nominations, that she wouldn't hold a grudge if she got picked. Well, how kind of her. Sure enough, Andrea ended up facing down the barrel of elimination, along with Jay Maxwell from the blue team, but like I said, she survived. Man, I'm seeing it, but I still can't believe it. Hell, she even walked out of there unfazed. But in this next episode, you'll see how these contestants tried to cheat and sabotage each other at the same time. Let's dive into the chaos of episode three, season 12. Mike Aresta was working at the fish station with Chris, but hold on, 
because this is when things got wild. Mike straight up told Chris to drop the scallops when it wasn't time yet. And well, Chris was obviously pretty confused. No, not on this one. It's a fucking risotto. Now you confuse me. Was this part of Mike's devious plan to throw Chris under the bus for making a mistake? Well, it sure looks like it. And Chris, still confused as hell, called out Mike for acting like a complete idiot. Fast forward a bit, and Chris warned Mike about a super hot pan, but not before actually asking him to stay away from his station. You want me to watch these? No, no, no. I got you, Chris. He doesn't want any help. And this is when the real fun began. When Ramsey called out for the next dish, Mike brought this uncrusted halibut to the pass, something Chris had totally forgotten about. I'm behind you. Hey, 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 hey. Halibut. Although Chris tried to stop him, Mike was determined to have his way. And, well, his plan to sabotage Chris finally worked its magic. Where's the crust? Uh, I didn't get it. You get it all, man! Yes, chef. But Mike wasn't done yet. He walked up with another halibut, and this time, he had his eyes on DeMarco. You see, DeMarco had forgotten to leave the bone in his chicken, which meant it needed a refire. I'm not sending one more fucking table out unless it's complete. Ramsey couldn't understand why the team's cooperation was going so poorly. Despite the warning, Scott ran out of patience and walked his lamb to the pass, not wanting to wait for the halibut. <clears throat> and that was the end of it. That one mistake got the entire blue team kicked out of the kitchen. Fuck up out of it. Get out. It was like everyone was trying to cheat to get ahead and send their dish out to the pass before anyone else had a chance to. There was no communication, no teamwork whatsoever, just full-blown aggro and sabotage. But that's nothing compared to the hard lessons that Jeremy Madden had to learn during his time in the kitchen. Remember when Jeremy's infamous lack of communication made Ramsey completely lose his mind? Jeremy, hey, hey, he's not even answering me. Come on, Jeremy. Can I get an answer from you? First off, the guy couldn't even hear the order. And when Ramsey confronted him about it, Jeremy straight up admitted he had no clue. I mean, seriously, the balls the guy must have had to just brush Ramsey off like that. But that wasn't the only time. Remember the croissant debacle? Jeremy decided to stand there like a statue, doing absolutely nothing. It was like he had a full-blown factory reset. Just look at him in action. Or, well, more aptly, in action. Jeremy, in the middle of like that when he's breakfast. Jeremy, what? Come around then, big boy. Ramsey was probably just as puzzled as I was when I saw this for the first time. And still am, watching it all over again. Minutes later, Jeremy finally brought up the croissant to the pass. But wait, looks like something's missing. So where's the smoked salmon scrambled eggs? Get smoked over there and I'll play the smoked salmon. Oh right, the smoked salmon. You know, like half the dish? After his grand standstill performance, Jeremy suddenly got a second wind and tried to finish up everything at once. Come on! Watch your back, watch your back. Come on, come down. Then came the moment of truth. All the plates were lined up for the pass. And guess what caught Ramsey's eye? You guessed it, Jeremy's plate. And this wasn't just any plate. It was a freaking sample. Some disgusting pig brought me the sample scrambled eggs that I cooked an hour ago. Can you believe the level of stupidity going on here? Well, Ramsey sure didn't, since he was in utter disbelief and proceeded to give Jeremy a piece of his mind. Yes, they save lives on a daily basis, and you want to serve that. You fucking kill someone with that! Well, considering the dude may as well have been sleeping, he definitely needed the wake-up call. But in the eighth episode of season 10, a contestant made a dirty move. And I mean that in the most literal sense of the word. The restaurant had some notable guests that night, including Tito Ortiz, who was served by the blue team, and Sugar Ray Leonard, who unfortunately had to endure Christina's undercooked risotto. Ramsey must have been far from pleased with these mishaps. Furthermore, Tiffany Johnson shocked everyone by attempting something truly revolting. Hello. Tiffany. Unbelievable. Can you imagine she actually placed a knife to her lips before inserting it into the Wellingtons? Disgusting. Ramsey not only caught her in the act, but also publicly reprimanded her for it. And her response? A mere half-hearted, yes, chef. No remorse, no disgust, no guilt of any kind at all. How charming. 
Furthermore, she completely brushed off Barbie Marshall when she attempted to communicate with her during the service. It ain't hard to see that she showed no interest in addressing the issue or even acknowledging her actions. You have it? Yes, Barbie. Okay. Hey, Barbie, just like move off of my station because I don't need help. To top it all off, she sent her Wellingtons to the pass without even properly wrapping the pastry. It was so bad that Ramsey had to intervene and prevent Barbie from putting them in the oven. That's when Tiffany completely lost control and had a full-blown meltdown. Handling criticism was definitely not her strong suit. But can you please organize it, Tiffany? Yeah, not an organize. She's picking up this already cooked. I don't know what she's doing. Uh, if I had a buck for every person that I've said couldn't handle criticism on this show, boy, I'd be a rich man. Given her stellar behavior, it came as no surprise that Tiffany's stay in Hell's Kitchen was short-lived. She was eliminated from the competition for displaying a poor attitude, showing absolutely no passion for cooking, and overall, just being a complete disappointment. But this next chef who served up trash can pasta surprisingly managed to finish in third place. In season three, we were introduced to Jen Yamola, who had a bit of a rocky start. During dinner service in the third episode, Jen was at the meat station. After Joanna Dunn's disastrous crab incident, Ramsey moved Jen and Julia Williams to the appetizer station to help the struggling red team. It took the team a long time to get their first set of appetizers out, but eventually, thanks to Jen and Julia, they got it done. However, while sending out the appetizers, Jen ended up cooking way too much spaghetti. Like, way, way too much. Not knowing what to do with the excess, she came up with a brilliant idea to throw it in the trash. But guess what? Just as she finished tossing it, Ramsey called for the next ticket. And I swear, you couldn't make this next part up. That ticket? Let me just get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. We had an order for spaghetti, and I threw out what we had. Well, it called for spaghetti. Because, of course, it did. Jen freaked out. Damn, she had just wasted a whole batch of the stuff the second before she actually needed it. But Jen had another, shall we say, brilliant idea. When I decided to retrieve the spaghetti from the top of the garbage and washed it. Yeah, no. How is it even okay to pick the whole bunch of spaghetti back out of the garbage to use it in her next dish? I mean, seriously, disgusting doesn't do justice to how awful it was. Meanwhile, Julia couldn't believe her eyes. Still, she called Jen out on it. Where'd you get it from? The garbage on the top? Oh, no, 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 no way. The only reason Jen escaped that night was because this little incident slipped through the cracks and Ramsey didn't get wind of it. Jeez, talk about dodging a bullet. Despite the pasta incident, Jen managed to learn from her mistakes and redeem herself, eventually making it to the top three. But her top three finish isn't why most people remember her. Nope. It was, and will always be, that trash can pasta. After Hell's Kitchen, Jen spoke to the New York Post and claimed that the show was rigged. She said the production team made her take the pasta from the trash can and that she was upset about it. She tried to discuss it with them, but they didn't listen. However, a fan of the show pointed out that Jen's claim of the show ruining her career is laughable, given that she, as a chef, was seen serving food from the trash on camera. Like, what would they possibly be able to do to you if you, you know, refused? So, what do you think? Is the show really rigged, or was Jen just trying to protect herself? Let me know what you have to say in the comments below. But if we're talking cheaters, I've gotta bring up this episode from season four, which was a total comedy of errors. With miscommunications left, right, and center, both teams were totally bombing the dinner service. Two hours later, it seems like neither of them were winning. So Ramsey pulled out the comment cards to pick a winner. And surprise, surprise, the blue team won because they actually managed to serve half their entrees and did slightly better than the red team too, I guess. That certainly helped. But here's where it gets interesting. Corey Erling got named the best of the worst, and that meant she had to nominate two people from her team for elimination. Now, the rule book says you gotta nominate the weakest chefs from that service, but Corey thought she could game the system in her favor. So she decided to try and get rid of the one she didn't like, letting her personal feelings mess with the spirit of the competition. Back in the dorms, instead of nominating Sharon like everyone expected, Corey was cooking up a sneaky plan. But oh boy, her teammates saw right through her. 
They knew Corey's game, and they weren't playing along. No one bothered to come and plead their case to her, and honestly, it wouldn't have made a difference anyway. But Corey had a different take on the matter. No one has come up to me and had the balls to fucking try to convince me to keep him here. When the moment came to name the nominees, Corey went for Christina as her first pick for strategic reasons. She might want to take a deeper look and actually look inside me, past my appearances, and examine what I have inside of me. And Jen as her second, just because she didn't like her. Talk about mixing emotions and competition. Now, Ramsey was a little surprised by the nominations, but he still called both of them down. But nobody was ready for this twist. Sharon. He eliminated Sharon instead of either one of the nominees Corey picked. Boom! Corey's plan blew up in her face. And Ramsey isn't one to forgive a slight like that. This scheme sealed her fate right then and there. Some viewers on YouTube even said that Ramsey wants smart players, but these contestants just end up trying his patience by being too clever for their own good. Ramsey didn't need to say a word directly to Corey, but I'd be surprised if she didn't receive the message loud and clear. But I have a conscience, and in good conscience, I could not keep Sharon. Don't mess with the boss. Another viewer mentioned that Corey made an absolutely scummy decision here by abusing the system like that. Luckily, Ramsey straightened the situation out and gave the boot to the person who actually deserved it. Yeah, you said it, Julie. Gal was definitely being a dirtbag here. But here comes a contestant from Pennsylvania who thought it was a brilliant idea to dip his finger into the food. My feelings about it can be summed up in one word. Repulsive. The first episode always revolves around making a lasting impression by showcasing impressive culinary skills. However, this individual, while attempting to make risotto, couldn't stop boasting about his vast and storied experience. Sadly for him, he couldn't walk the talk he was throwing down. Soup, like liquid. It's so runny, you can't even spot the rice in there. The whole kitchen was a hot mess. Chaos from all sides. This guy named Gaurav Navin who thought he was the risotto expert, tried to fix it, but ended up making it way too peppery. And instead of owning up to it, he had the nerve to try and defend himself. It's a f***ing risotto, not a vindaloo. Yes, chef. I love black pepper in my risotto. Like, seriously, dude, the dish is for the customers, not for you. Everything was falling apart for both teams, and Ramsey was losing his patience. But hold up. Our risotto king had another trick up his sleeve. We do not stick our fingers in the food. Flick it and then go back inside. Can you believe it? He really did that. Ramsey was disgusted. He tore into the entire team, asking if they had any respect for the customers. And to top it off, the guy got caught on camera licking his tongue while getting an earful from Ramsey. Ugh, dude's got absolutely zero shame. And what's more disgusting is he thought it was fine. A fan said that what she hated about Guarov was that he honestly didn't see anything wrong with licking his fingers and putting it in food someone else is gonna eat. And if this is how he acts on camera, imagine how he is behind closed doors. Ugh. Another fan said Guarov didn't seem to understand the basics of hospitality and catering hygiene. Like, HK ain't Culinary 101. With countless failures, overcooked lobster, and scallop disasters, Ramsey had enough and kicked the whole blue team out of the kitchen. Well, better luck next time, I guess. During the deliberation that night, our risotto prodigy was in the hot seat. And what did he have to say for himself? He had the audacity to claim that he had all the passion, attitude, and talent to stay in the competition. You can probably guess how Ramsey took that. You forgot fingers. Yeah, that was the end of Navin's time in Hell's Kitchen. Good riddance. Now, these aren't even half the cheaters who have graced the Hell's Kitchen set. If I missed your favorite dubious contestant, don't forget to sound off in the comments and join me in my channel's Discord server. We can continue this discussion and more there for free. And for those of you who want a little extra, I've got an exclusive server just for you. Well, I'm excited to see you there, but before you leave, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here. It's even crazier.